This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, in the last video, we looked at a public issue or offer for subscription and, and worked through an example where we saw the difficulty we have with regards to pricing up the share. Okay, we demonstrated from the numbers example that we need to price it below the current share price to make it attractive. Uh, but in doing so, we're going to go through there and give some of the gains from this project, not just to the existing shareholders, but also the new shareholders. Uh, we thought, well, let's try and see if we can give all the gains to the existing shareholders. But in the second part of the example, we saw that that then meant that the price the shares had to be issued at was above the current market value and therefore that rendered it ineffective didn't it okay that the new shareholders would not be attracted to buy a share that is priced above its current market value you would go to the market wouldn't we okay so uh just some other ways uh of helping you get around that issue still using equity finance but instead of looking at an offer for subscription uh, like we did in the previous video, you can have there an offer for sale by tender. Okay, now an offer for sale by tender, quite simply, is exactly the same. Uh, it's there to new shareholders. However, the share price is not fixed. Okay, so in our last example in part A, we said the share price is fixed at two dollars forty. Okay, what we do is we invite the shareholders. To bid for the shares and um, what we go through and do there is we encourage people to bid the highest because if you bid higher you are more likely to get the shares okay uh, and then what we will do is once we've received all this, the, the sealed bids uh, we will go through there and allocate shares to people who have bid the highest first and then what will go through and happen there is we will go down the level of bids in terms of the price until we get to a price whereby all of the funds have been raised once we get to that point there anybody who has bid at a lower price will not receive the shares okay so it's a way of incentivizing the new shareholders uh, to be proactive and put in a higher bid and therefore giving them more chance of investing within our business uh, the third one that we've got is looking at a placing or a private placing. So again, it's a new issue of shares in our currently quoted business. But here we place those new shares directly with a sponsor. OK, so that sponsor is there, your, your merchant bank, uh, so your large commercial bank, and they will buy the shares directly from you okay and they will then go through there and sell it on to their clients okay uh if the clients aren't able to buy the shares then the merchant bank will guarantee to buy the shares from you in full but that might cost just a bit of a small fee okay uh, but the key thing is is you are guaranteed to get the proceeds it just might cost you a little bit more in terms of issue costs if the clients aren't prepared to buy those shares from the bank uh, just note there's a small caveat when we do a private placing very very general but uh, you do need to make some of those shares available to the public okay to the general public uh, the, the figures quoted there, 25%, I think that was taken from the, the London Stock Exchange. Uh, that may not be consistent across all jurisdictions around the world. The key thing is, is that if it is a private placing, some of the shares need to be made available to the general public. OK, you can investigate uh, on whatever country you are studying in and have a look how your stock market is regulated in terms of what percentage needs to be granted uh, to the general public. You wouldn't be tested on it. It's just pure there as interest. And if you like a little bit of home research. OK, excellent. Uh, the fourth one, the final one uh, of issuing new shares is looking at a rights issue. Do I need to say much about a rights issue? I don't think I do. Uh, it's an issue of shares to the current shareholders. Uh, so not new shareholders, the current shareholders in proportion to their current shareholding. So it could be, say, a one for four rights issue at three dollars per share. OK, key bit is that the issue price needs to be below the current market value to make it attractive to the shareholders. Uh, also covers any risk. 
the, the current share price might fall. And if it does, it will have to fall by a significant amount uh, to go past the issue price. OK, we'll see that a little bit more in the next example. But also you offer it to your existing shareholders. And if they are not prepared to buy the shares, maybe they don't have the funds to invest, then what they can do, they will not lose out if they then go through and sell on those rights to another investor who can then go through there and buy the shares instead. However, uh, if you don't take up the rights and you sell them onto somebody else, then that may go through there and change your percentage ownership uh, and possibly the, the level of control within the business. Okay. Uh, key bit again is you have a, a current pot of shares and what they're trading at. If you add some more shares into there, the, the new shares issued, and those shares are issued at a lower price, then that is going to dilute the overall price of shares within that pot. And that dilution of the price means that the share price after the issue will fall. OK, what we might have to do in terms of computations is actually work out what that price is after the issue. We're going to have to work it out theoretically. The price after the issue is referred to as the X right price. So we will go through there and see how we calculate your theoretical X right price or your TERP, okay, or your TERP. I still just call it your theoretical X right price. I look at this and think, is that new? No, it's not. We covered EPS, was it there in F2 earnings per share, IAS 33. And we had to work out the X right price, didn't we? Uh, when we had uh, a rights issue of shares, when we were working out the earnings per share. We did, OK? It, it was a while ago that you may have done it, but trust me, you have already calculated your theoretical X right price previously. Uh, how do we calculate it? Well, we just work out a weighted average of the shares in issue after the rights issue, OK? Do you remember how to do it? No? Yes? Maybe? Well, what we'll do, I'll work through this example here. And then what you can do is you can work it through the next example under your own steam, okay, in your own time. So what have we got? Uh, you've got there, uh, should say part A and B. It says part C and D. There's a small formatting error on my notes. So I shall rectify that at some point in the future. Uh, I won't make a note of it now because I can't find a pen other than the one that I'm using to write on the screen. Uh, but it says calculate the theoretical X right value uh, per share. OK, so we always work it on a per share basis. It's much easier. And then a new aspect, the value of a right. We'll discuss what the value of a right is once we've worked out the theoretical X right price. OK, uh, so the theoretical X right price is the weighted average of all the shares in issue after the right issue has taken place. And it says here a company's current share price is $5 per share. And we make a one for four right issue at $3 per share. So what we have there in terms of our old shares, we have, is it four shares at $5? So is that the a total value of $20? Uh, we make a one for four, uh, and that is done, is it, at $3. So there are now, if you like, in this pot of shares, five shares. Those shares are in total worth 23. Okay. Uh, the theoretical X right price. is there as 23 divided by 5 because it wants the value per share and is that there as four dollars and sixty cents okay boom there we go uh so that is the value of a right or sorry the value of a share pardon me uh, the value of a share after the right issue has taken place okay uh part b wants us to work out is it the value of a right uh, so what is the value of a rights uh, the value of a right is 
the worth of being able to sell your option to buy that share. So we have an option uh, to buy one new share. Okay, we have the option to buy it. Is it? I think at three dollars per share, wasn't it? Okay, but maybe we don't have the three dollars per share uh, to be able to buy that new share. Okay, so what we can do is we can sell it. Okay, but if we sell it, we want to make sure that we are no worse off. Okay, that we do not lose out on any wealth. So what we have there is that we lose out, don't we, on the new share. Okay, so to work out the value of a right, we take the theoretical X right price at $4.60. Which is effectively what we lose out on, isn't it? Because we don't buy the share at $4.60. But at the same time, we save on the purchase. So we go through that. And then deduct the issue price. And that gives me the, is it the value of a right? Is there at $1.60? So if I were to go through there, you know, if, if I entered into the transaction, I'd have a share of $4.60, wouldn't I? Okay. If I don't enter into it, I want to sell it to make sure that I've still got my $3 that I didn't spend. And a little bit more to get it up to $4.60. So the difference between the issue price and the X right price is the value of a right. Okay. And that there is $1.60. Uh, just be careful. That's the answer to the question. Uh, just a little aside. If we had to work out, and again, this could be an, an objective test, multiple choice question. If you had to work out the value of a right. per existing share so make sure that you read the question does it want the value of a right or the value of a right per existing share that takes the value of a right is it there at one dollar sixty and divides it by the number of old or the number of existing shares so that gives me there, is it 0.4 dollars or is it 40 cents? Okay, so the answer to this question was $1.60. The answer to some potential questions that you may get in your question kits, it could be the value of a right pair existing share. Okay, so do just read that very, 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 very carefully. Okay, so that is saying, look, uh, how much does each share get you in terms of wealth okay in total it was one dollar sixty uh, but for each share that you own currently it's 40 cents okay so that's just a little aside uh why is all that then relevant well what we've got there is if we just insert just a new page what we're going to see in the next example and something that, that, that you will begin to look at in a lot more detail as you work the questions is we need to look there at the impact on shareholder wealth. Because I don't know whether you noticed, okay? Now, the issue that you've got there in that example is that I am an old shareholder. I had a share of $5, okay? We've just gone through there. And said, well, now that same share is worth $4.60. So it looks like you've lost out in wealth, okay? But you haven't. And we need to be able to demonstrate it, okay? The fact that you do not lose out on any wealth, okay? Uh, so let's just say uh, the impact on shareholder wealth if you own, say, 100 shares, okay? And uh, let's just say there, scenario number one is that you buy the shares, okay? So what we need to look at is we need to look at the wealth. So we need to look at the wealth before. So before I have 100 shares, don't I? 
and they were at is it five dollars per ship so the wealth before is five hundred dollars isn't it okay happy with that yeah we want to make sure that afterwards it hasn't changed okay we said it was worth five dollars the share it's now worth was it four dollars sixty we've lost we haven't let's show why because what happens after is you have now 125 shares at four dollars sixty isn't there because remember it's one for four isn't it so it's 100 plus 100 divided by the four okay so for every one or for every four you get one so if you divide it by four multiplied by one you work out the number of extra shares okay uh, if i tap that into my calculator you probably already have as i was waffling about there uh, that gives you 575 you think well, hang on a minute chris you're talking nonsense again no i'm not because yes the price has gone up but there's something else we need to consider and what we need to consider there is that you need to deduct the fact that you have bought 25 shares at three dollars that's when it gets interesting 25 times three is there at 75 if i deduct that i get 500 and you can see there that there has been no change no change in shareholder wealth okay provided that you buy the shares okay excellent uh shall we just advance it on okay before i let you loose on the example uh what happens there if shall we say scenario two we decide to sell the rights to the shares i, I don't have the cash uh, to pay for the share so I sell them on okay when you sell them on you sell them at the value of a right okay so how many rights do you get well, we can work that out in a moment but again we need to go through there and look at it before uh, that's five hundred dollars. Nothing changed there. It's the same as above, isn't it? Okay. But afterwards is a little bit more complicated because we've not bought the new shares, have we? So what we've got there is we still now have a hundred. Okay, we don't have one twenty-five. We've got a hundred. Okay, because we haven't bought the shares. We've sold the rights to somebody else. So it's a hundred at four dollars sixty which is four hundred and sixty dollars isn't it okay now what you've done is you sold 25 rights at the value of a right is that the at forty dollars and when you add the two together it is pure magic okay because once again you can see that there is no change in wealth okay there you go so provided that we do something okay uh, that's either buying the shares or selling the rights to the shares we won't lose out okay if let's just say you decided to do nothing at all then if you did nothing at all that's what you'd be left with okay 100 shares four dollars sixty being the theoretical x right price so you would lose out on wealth wouldn't we okay who would do nothing who would be foolish enough to do nothing there could be people out there okay it does happen on the odd occasion okay but to make sure you don't lose out you should either buy the shares if you haven't got the money contact your broker contact the company and they will sell them for you okay you can be able to sell that right and you will not lose out on any wealth.
Okay. So what I'm going to challenge you to go through and do, if I can find the page, there's example number three. Part A says calculate the X right market value, so the X right price. B, calculate the value of a right, so exactly what we went through and did in example two. And then have a go at part C. A little bit tricky. Okay. In part C, uh, calculate the change in wealth. You'll see that, you know, that there's no change in wealth, but work it through. For Mrs. X, who has 1,200 shares, assuming she takes up half and sells the other half. Ooh, that's going to be a little bit tricky. Have a play around, and once you do, you can then start up with the next video where I will go through and explain it all for you. Other than that, enjoy the example.